Good evening, everyone. We did it. We filled up 2017-18 Panini Donruss Optic Basketball, a full case break. Pick your team number five from jazbeeshobbyland.com. We've got another pick your team already posted in the store. So check it out. Get your teams while, they, uh, while they're there. I'll go fast. Big thanks to these folks for getting to the action tonight. On the 12th, 12 box break on the 12th. Everyone here knows all the great value about the basketball. They know that a lot of value in the in the parallels, in the big rookie name autographs, all that sort of stuff. So thank you for getting into this b-ball, the hoops. Thanks for hooping it up. Time flies when you're having fun, ladies and gentlemen. The regular season in basketball already over. Done. Regular season done. Playoffs about playoffs are about to begin on Saturday. One autograph per box is what we're is what we're looking for. All right, get comfortable. Good luck, everybody. Playoffs. I've got my playoff bracket up. I don't think they've announced rookie of the year uh, of the year yet. Well, what does everyone think? Who do you think the rookie of the year is going to be? Ben Simmons still technically a rookie. He did not play a single game last year, so he's still uh, he's still considered a rookie according to the league. But it's got to be Ben Simmons or or uh, or Donovan Mitchell, right? Or Donovan Mitchell. I think Dennis Smith was pretty close. He had a he still had a good season too. Jason Tatum seems to be heating up a little bit later here in the season. Obviously for my Lakers, Kyle Kuzma was strong. Josh Hart. Seem to be more than serviceable. He's pretty popular here in LA. You know, Lonzo Ball had his ups and downs, but little nagging knee injuries, but he played pretty solidly. He played pretty well this season. I mean, who else? This was a great rookie class. Uh, Lori Markinen. Lori Markinen for the uh, for the Bulls. You know, played extremely well. And I think even even the tier of rookies down like just the tier down from like the top top rookies you know you look at guys like yeah De'Aaron Fox had a solid season Josh Jackson had a solid season Bam Adebayo Malik Monk etc etc you know they got like guys in Portland Zach Collins got some playing time you know so I think TJ Leaf didn't get really a lot of minutes but I felt like even even TJ Leaf stuff was selling Relative, relatively well on a secondary market. All right. We're we'll start off with Jimmy Butler. If he's healthy. Here's Amir Johnson, pink velocity. Hey, Bry. <laughs> How are you? Pink velocity, 50 out of 79. So we're going to breeze through these rated rookies unless they are uh, the hollow ones. That's where the value are. So if this was a rated rookie, Kyle Kuzma hollow, that would be the that would be the big one there. There's also that lime green swishful thinking, Steph Curry to 175. Serge Ibaka orange. And Sterling Brown for the Bucks. Use your rated rookie autograph. And that'll be for James with the Milwaukee Bucks. Matt Appleby with the Raptors. 43 out of 199. 
We'll we'll t we'll sleeve those, but top load all of those um, afterwards. There we go. So there's a hollow deer and fox. Those are the ones that are a little bit more rare. Carry a little bit more. Will definitely carry a lot more value. Nice deer and fox for the Sacramento Kings. Ricky Buffalo. They've quietly built a uh, decent team up there. There's Terrence Ferguson. That's even better. George Gervin, the Iceman. These are pretty cool inserts too. And Josh Jackson. One sixty two out of one seventy five for OKC. Uh, and that'll be for Ricky. Ricky picked up a lot of teams in this. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk playoffs. Uh, just the good stuff ships in this gold rush. The veteran base does not ship. So, for example... Sorry, T-Wolves, you're not getting that Jamal Crawford. Sorry, Pistons. No Stanley Johnson. That's a retro series insert. You will get that. And that's Thomas Bryant, Raider Rookie. You will get that. So there's act I think there's actually more of these type of stuff than these. So you'll still get a good stack of stuff, I think. Uh, let's talk playoffs. Um... Where, where should we start? Eastern Conference? Raptors, Wizards. Who does everyone have in that game? Raptors, Wizards. Raptors are the one seed. Wizards are the eight seed. Raptors have, I guess, what's the general, the one sentence narrative on the Raptors? They've changed their, their whole playing style philosophy around, kind of, but with the same players. They got a great bench, and they're playing well. with a purpose. And the Wizards, well, they got John Wall back. He could be, he could single-handedly take over a game, but is he fully healthy? Gold Rush says, Raptors sweep, 4-0. Not, not a game for the Wizards. Not even, out, not even if, when they're playing at Hogwarts. What does everyone else think? Wizards have a good team too. They, they might be able to to pip a game, to sneak a game from the Raptors in Washington, maybe. All right. We got a redemption. Lou Williams, orange. Oh, sorry. Clippers. 198 out of 199. There was John Wall right there. He could be the difference maker. There's J.J. Barea. Thirty-nine out of forty-nine. Bradley Beal, that's one of those guys that could Cause some trouble for the Raptors. 34 out of 79. Pink Velocity. There's Lime Green, Jalen Brown. Lime Green, the rookies, Markel Fultz. Nice one for Boombox and the Sixers. I wouldn't be surprised, Mark. Out of 175, if this went for like 20 bucks, maybe. There's Jalen Brown for the Celtics. I like when the 
parallel matches the color of the team. Lime green with the green of the Celtics. The redemption is... Dennis Smith Jr. Rated rookie signature hollow. Nice. EA with the Dallas Mavericks. That is strong. I don't think we've seen a Dennis Smith Jr. yet, right? Maybe. Nice one for the Mavs. One of the top rookies of, of the season. Well, I think, yeah, I, I, don't, I think the Raptors are not going to have too many problems with the Wizards, ultimately. What about Cavs, Pacers? Maybe more people have opinions on LeBron versus the Pacers. Cavs are a four seed facing the Pacers, a five seed. Pacers have kind of quietly had a solid season. The biggest change being Victor Oladipo. They're just all playing well, playing together, and just winning ball games. They they comfortably, I feel like they kind of comfortably settled into that five seed. The Cavs are a four seed. Still have kind of, uh, still don't have a full season of all their new teammates under their belts, playing with each other and all that sort of stuff. So I don't know. Does that lack of playoff experience from some of those guys, Larry Nance Jr., Jordan Clarkson, does that affect them? I agree. Gold, Gold Rush Kurt saying it's hard to see LeBron losing in the first round. I agree. There was a stat, though, that I saw that ESPN, I think, published this that said, I think since like the 80s or 90s, no team under a four, a four seed and under has made it to the finals. So the last time, I think, so four, five, six, seven, eight, you're not probably not going to reach the finals. I think the last time a four did reach the finals was a Rockets team in the 80s or 90s. But that doesn't mean they're not going to win the first round. I, yeah, I agree. Hard to see LeBron losing in that first round. Yeah, I didn't know that either. ESPN just uh, ESPN published that. I, I don't know if it goes back as far as the 80s. Maybe it goes back to just the 90s. But but yeah, if you think about it, that's kind of it, like it's true. Like you're like, wait a second, yeah. When's the last time you saw like a fifth seed overall end up in the finals? It just doesn't happen. There's Josh Jackson, lime green, the rookies. Twenty-six out of one seventy-five for the Suns. Michael K. There's Lonzo, Ben Simmons, and Michael Cage signature series for the Clip Show. Nick Sanderson with that one. Nice. More lime green. Demarcus Cousins. Poor Boogie. I feel like if the well, we'll we'll get to the Pelicans a little bit later in the break, but that is for the Pelicans. Wesley Matthews, and we got mm, Dwayne Bacon, delicious bacon, and four out of ten, Aaron Gordon. That card is gold. Gold for the Magic, who uh, who let go of their coach today after, and that's for Charlotte, after just two years, two seasons, I think, which I thought was kind of short. I mean, I think we, we sort of, I mean, they didn't, they didn't have like playoff aspirations or anything like that. I think they just kind of expected... You know, there's going to have to be a bit of a rebuild. There's Lonzo, the rookies, hollow. 
right? So this goes to Ricky. Red Al Horford. Orange Buddy Healed. And these guys right here. That's out of 199 for the Kings and for the Celtics. As 70 out of 99 for Mark and the Celtics. Ricky with the Kings. All right. <clears throat> All right, Cruz is like, that's like giving a good running back only five carries a game. Yeah, you need a few years. I feel like, especially if you're, it's not like the, no, it's not like the, the, the Magic had like a playoff team built in and they needed a coach to get them to the next level. You know, it just it, it kind of didn't make sense because he was only there for a couple of years. And you would think that you got to, especially if you're doing a rebuild, three, four years. They traded a lot of, they've traded away Oladipo to the, to the Thunder. They traded a lot of assets and everything. They're essentially rebuilding. I thought that was kind of, kind of quick on the trigger. Next game, Sixers and Heat. The hot, hot Sixers. They couldn't lose for like the last two weeks, two, three weeks of the season. Last, what, 13, 14 games of the season, they were winning on the road, which was a difficult thing for them, and winning at home. Easy schedule. You know, they weren't really playing a lot of difficult teams, but hey, they were still executing. Sixers, the three seed, are playing the Heat, the six seed. Kind of heat are kind of in kind of impressive because you don't really think of a lot of star names on the Heat until, and then they, but then they got Dwayne Wade back, which I'm sure helps, helps that, helps that young team. Spolster seems to be doing a good job. I think there's some injuries, right? I think the Heat are, Heat may be carrying some injuries. And I think, uh, I think Ola, Oladipo, I think Embiid, I mean, will probably come back by the second or third game of that particular series. That's going to be a tough one for the Heat. Heat had a solid season. I think did, you know, obviously great job. But you got to think that the Sixers will take care of business pretty easily here. All right, there's Alfred Payton. Speaking of the Magic. Lime green for Orlando. That'll be for Ricky. 109 out of 175. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 <laughs> whoa. Retro series Ben McAdoo. One of one. Wow. Buffalo Braves. What are the did the Buffalo Braves turn into a pro team? To the checklist. Let's consult the checklist first. I think cardboardconnection.com will likely say Buffalo Braves as well. I mean, he was he was a Laker. Ah, I got it. The retro series insert, according to groupbreakchecklist.com, goes to right there, the Los Angeles Clippers. There you go. So Clippers, Nick Sanderson. One of one right there. Wow. Nick Sanderson. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. That is pretty strong right there.
I don't know what that what the connection is. Oh, oh, I see. All right, all right. So knowledge, folks. You ready for this knowledge? Ready for this knowledge? The Buffalo Braves were an American professional basketball franchise based in Buffalo, New York, obviously. The Braves competed in the NBA as a member of the club as a member club of the league's Eastern Conference Atlantic Division from 70 to 78. In 78, the Braves owner, John Y. Brown Jr., swapped franchises with then Boston Celtics owner Irv Levin, who then moved the team to San Diego, where it was renamed the San Diego Clippers, and then moved up to L.A. in the 80s. Knowledge. I did not know that. Goran Dragic, Miami Heat. Pink Velocity on that one for the Heat. Dylan Card. Sorry, Dylan. 21 out of 79. And we've got the Amir Johnson Signature Series. Kyle Kramer is back. Hi, right, no worries, Kyle. That's pretty solid. There's Amir Johnson. Sixers. That'll be for Boombox. Dwayne Bacon. Hollow. How did your abs do, Kyle? I haven't checked that score in a little bit. And 28 out of 39, Black Velocity, Jabari Parker. Is he healthy? I think he is, right? Is he playing minutes? I think he's back on track. This could be a this could be a big a big addition for the Bucks. We'll be discussing that game in a second. And I'm opening up the next one. There's Thaddeus Young for the Pacers. There's Kobe and Al Horford. Oh, they got destroyed in the third period. They were they looked like they were keeping it close. Alright, 140 to 199 for the Pacers. That'll be for Michael. All right, next up, next game, next box, next game. We're going to talk about this guy's team right here. What does everyone think? Celtics are the two seed facing the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis, Bledsoe, Antetokounmpo, Parker. What does everyone think? Celtics, Bucks. But the, the, the Celtics... Celtics banged up. No Kyrie. They lost Glenn, uh, They lost Gordon Hayward very early in the season. I think they've got a, a couple other key uh, key guys who are also injured. Really, it's just it's just this guy, Jason Tatum. Now, good, what's good for the hobby would be for Jason Tatum to ball out and beat up the Knicks, or at least just go down guns blazing, right? But I just I don't know if the Celtics have they still have a good team, but I just don't know if they'll have the firepower to handle the Bucks. Now what's weird about the Bucks though, remember they made that coaching change. They fired Jason Kidd, so they kinda of have an interim coach there. You know, I mean say what you want about Jason Kidd, but he's Jason Kidd still has as a player. Maybe as a coach has playoff experience, you know that kind of that kind of leadership helps in the playoffs. But the Bucks do have a pretty healthy, young, dynamic team. You want to see Giannis Antetokounmpo just just go nuts? Hmm. What is that? What does everyone think? Gold Rush says it's hard to say. Celtics all. Always have like this winning ability in these weird cases. Yeah, they somehow figure out how to win games. I mean, I mean they were without Kyrie for a while, and it didn't seem like that slowed them down too much. They didn't. They didn't look completely lost. Jason Tatum has really come into his own, so that's good for the hobby too. But what does everyone think? 
Oh, <laughs> Gold Rush wa does want to see Giannis go nuts because he's got some rookie autos of him. Yeah, Brad Stevens is pretty pretty great for uh, for Boston. Bam out of bio, hollow rated rookie. Greg Monroe, blue. And for the Knicks, 40 at 99, Dave Dubuchere. Love the, I love those retro series cards. Yeah, I think there's a lot of Gilo. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, teams in the league who were like, "Man, wish we would have picked up on Brad Stevens when he was available." I know, I know when the I know I was hoping that the Lakers would make that move too, and was bummed when my rival Celtics made that move. Malik Monk, nice rated rookie autograph. Malik Monk for Charlotte. That'll be for Alan Murdoch with the Charlotte Hornets. People like the Malik Monk. Actually, had a pretty decent season too. There's Miles Turner. There's Alfred Payton, Pink Velocity, and there's Jason Tatum, the rookies, hollow for Boombox. See, Boombox wants the Celtics to do well because then. That probably goes for a decent amount already. And Frank Tilakina, rated rookie for the Knicks. That's kind of cool. The orange parallel matched up with the usual blue of the rated rookie gives it a nice Knicks color. I like it. Who has New York? Ricky. 175 out of 199. Especial. And 45 out of 79 on that Alfred Payton. All right, now let's go over to the West. Let's start with the one and the eight Rockets versus Timberwolves. Rockets versus Timberwolves. Rockets are the Rockets. James Harden is looking great. Chris Paul, they figured out they 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 can play together. Clint Capella is great. You got a lot of great role players on that team. You know, Mike D'Antoni has that team humming. Play, they even play a little bit of defense. There is one guy that they're missing that's hurt that might affect some of their defense. But still, I mean they're they're firing on all cylinders. Seems like they they can be not they cannot be stopped. Timberwolves, I like the makeup of that team. I definitely like them a lot better with Jimmy Butler in there, but I think uh, I, I'm a little more confident about taking the Rockets in this in this particular series. Timberwolves Look great. I love Carl Anthony Towns. I love Jimmy Butler, but Jimmy Butler may not be, you know, may still need to be working back from that injury. He hasn't played too much. He has to ramp ramp up that that intensity pretty quickly. And Jimmy Butler is, I don't think he's he's too happy with some of his teammates sometimes on on effort level. They struggled to they struggled to beat the Denver Nuggets in what should have been a must win game, a game that they were leading, I think, for much of the game. Had to go into overtime. Kyle says go Timberwolves. I don't, know, I, they, I don't know if they're going to win a game. They might win a game. All right. Good luck. What does everyone else think? There's Lonzo, the rookies. 
Those rookie, those the rookie set, fewer and far between than the rated rookie stuff. T.J. Warren, lime green. You put the lime in the coconut. Out of 175, Suns, Michael K. Buddy Heald, Marcin Gortat, orange. Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And, wow, look at that, more Clippers. Rated rookie hollow, Milos Teodosic. No, I think has been actually been playing pretty well down the stretch for the Clippers. Him and uh, Sendarius Thornwell. I mean, the Clippers were ravaged with injuries, so. Oh, I think I didn't show you the back of that Gortat. That was 145 and 199. This is Orange, J.J. Barea, Mavs, E.A. with the Mavericks. Um, Kyle Kramer saying, call me crazy, but the T-Wolves have the talent to beat the Rockets. The chemistry just isn't there. Yeah, that is crazy. You are crazy. There's Chris Paul. But, I, but maybe not that crazy, but I think you are right, though. I think that's kind of what I'm getting to is, um, is that... There were some comments by Jimmy Butler in like some post games in the last couple of weeks. They, I mean, he was, he was essentially saying that the team was soft. You know, uh, that's Cavs edition of Kyrie, by the way. Here's Chris Paul for the Rockets. Michael Tran with the Rockets, two out of ninety nine. Um, so like, yeah, I, th I think that that does kind of lead to maybe some chemistry issues, or maybe not even chemistry issues, but just youth issues. You know, where where guys like Andrew Wiggins, right, maybe have gone, have have played the last few years on on just raw natural talent alone, maybe maybe switches off on game sometimes, maybe is perceived by guys like Jimmy Butler that they're not playing as hard as they could be playing, like up to their talent level. So yeah, that 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 does create some some uh, some issues there. I like Thibodeau. Right, he's he's the coach for the Timberwolves, I'm pretty sure. So, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe the game is closer. Is the is the is the series closer than I think it is? I don't know. What what Clippers fans out here will always say that that it always seems like every year, uh, every year that that the Clippers were in the playoffs, they were without. They never had Blake and. Chris Paul playing together for like more than a few games in the playoffs and all in all of the games that they ended up playing. You know, it was always Chris Paul went down with like a like a four to six week injury. You know, Blake Griffin is out with a month long injury or something like that. One or the other, they've never been fully healthy together at the same time. I don't know why, just unlucky maybe because they were a joke, says Kyle Kramer. Possibly, I. But yeah, I, I mean, I, uh, the, the, there's just there's just too good. Yeah, Gold Rush is like I, I'm saying the same. James Harden is just no way else to explain it. Just the Rockets will just win, says Gold Rush. I think it'll be competitive. I think if uh, if one were to put pennies on uh, on these games, Nick Sanderson says Harden's beard will win two games by it. So Nick, did you see your did you see the big hit? That you have? I can show it to you right now. Um, I think it might be close. The Timberwolves coaching is good. They, they do have talent on the team. It just won't. It just. I just. It just won't be enough. In a maybe in a one off. Yeah, Timberwolves on their day. Can, can beat the Rockets on their day. Oh, nice. You're welcome, man. I just wanted to make sure you saw it. I'll show you again. It's good enough to show again, Nick. Nick Sanderson had the Clippers, everybody. And we pulled him that Bob McAdoo. But it's like Buffalo Braves edition. Which turned, in, which turned into the San Diego Clippers returned to the LA Clippers. But I kind of like that. That sort of UNC-ish powder blue uniforms there. 
Nice Donovan Mitchell, red. Markel Fultz, hollow. A couple nice parallels right off the bat. Markel Fultz will go to Boombox and the Sixers. Strong. And for EA and the Mavs, no, I'm sorry. E, well, no, EA has the Jazz, too. I looked down the list, and there's Eric's name with the Jazz as well. There you go. Dan Smith Jr. and this Donovan Mitchell out of 99. Well, what will this go for? That probably goes for a pretty, pretty decent amount. We'll be talking about the Jazz in the next box. It's time to make the rainbow, Nick Sanderson. And there's Derek White. Rated rookie autograph. For the Spurs, that'll be for Vic. Little Oppo Joe Mojo. There's Hollow, Lori Markinen. Another another uh, one of the big bright spots for the Bulls. Another hot rookie this year. EA with the Bulls. You ha I got you the one of one. Should we just make the rainbow tonight? Might as well make the, might as well make the rainbow tonight. Derek Rose orange. Did, wasn't there a a, sil, a hollow version of that one, Andy? I could have sworn that I saw a hollow version of that. No, that's T Mac. Hang on, give me give me just a second here. I thought there was a base version of that that I saw. They're, they're easier to spot because they've got that pink on the side. No, it's Glenn Rice. Maybe not. No, that's the glove. That's Clyde the Glide. John Stock. I thought I thought I saw a base version, but maybe not. All right. Anyway. We've got plenty of boxes. I'm sure we can find another one, right? 45 out of 199, Derek Rose. Every rose has its thorn. Shaq. Al Horford, Lime Green. That is 15 out of 175. Some nice parallels there. All right, well, the uh, Donovan Mitchell leads us to, it's a nice, this is a perfect segue. That Donovan Mitchell right there leads us to the Thunder and the Jazz. Seed four, fourth seed, Thunder, fifth seed, Utah Jazz. What does everyone think? I kind of sigh. I kind of sighed like that because, because I, I I like the Jazz or I like the uh, Thunder on paper, and when everything's clicking on all cylinders, Thunder are a pretty dangerous team. But which Thunder team are gonna gonna show up? You know, is Carmelo? Is he going to be more of a hindrance than a, than a help on that team? Or does he adjust the game that is good for the team? I mean, really, I feel like you kind of just... If you have an asset like Russell Westbrook, I, you almost think that you just have to turn him loose and just say, hey, PG-13, you know, just kick back, relax. Clean up the boards. You know, just just let just let Russell Westbrook go bananas. Mello, just chill. Try to play a little defense, please. Let Stephen Adams do some do 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 some dirty work too. Stephen Adams is great as well. 
I, I like the Thunder on paper, but I feel like the Jazz are going to keep it more than competitive. They might even win win that series. Which is kind of crazy because the way the bracket is, is set up, I think the Thunder match up better against beating the possibly beating the Rockets than the Jazz do. So the Jazz have a good chance of beating the Thunder. <laughs> so I think the Rockets will beat both of them, but from TV perspective, I guess you'd want to see you'd want to see James Harden kind of reopen that that kind of sore subject, right? Reopen that storyline. James Harden, Oklahoma, Russell Westbrook. There's Green Wesley Matthews, 85, 85? 85 out of 175. Jazz are a, uh, they're a tough out though. The Jazz are a tough out. Donovan Mitchell's been playing incredibly well. There's Terrence Ross, Orlando. Rudy Gobert is great. There's for the Magic, Ricky. One out of 199. First one ever made. And we've got for the Clippers. Red, 21 out of 99, DeAndre Jordan. That'll go to Nick Sanderson. Yeah, imagine if the Thunder still had Westbrook, Harden, and Durant. That would just be... It, I, I don't think it was possible, right? Like money-wise, I guess they, I suppose they could have kept James Harden, but who's to say that James Harden would become who he is if he hadn't left? You know, there's Evan Turner, he's twelve out of seventy-nine, and Derek White, another Derek White for the Spurs. Pink Velocity for the Trailblazers will go to Cruz. We're gonna get to their game in the next box. There's Ivan Rab for the Grizz. Justin Patton for the Timberwolves. Lime Green rated rookie. That is for Jonah Wilson and the Timberwolves. 53 out of 1. So did they really? Gold Rush saying you're mad. Your Nuggets traded Donovan Mitchell in the draft. I didn't realize they traded that, that pick. Josh Hart. All right, next box. Next game. The third seeded Trailblazers versus the six seeded Pelicans. What does everyone think about that series? Oh, you guys ended up getting Tyler Lydon. You know, actually played well for the Nuggets this year. Was their last year Jamal Murray? Paul Murray was a little, little bit of a pain in the butt for my Lakers, but but I feel like he, I, I thought everyone thought he was a bust, I think, year one, right? Well, not maybe not a bust, but, you know, all the rookies were kind of not that great last year, but but they, a lot of them really improved this year. Paul Murray had a really good season. Um, I like the Blazers in this one. I think the Pelicans, I think they're just going to run out of gas. After losing Boogie Cousins... Anthony Davis really just kind of took took over the team. Him and Drew Holiday were just balling out. They're just incredible. But I think in a seven game series with the Blazers, yeah, Mark Lundy's got got the Blazers too. In a seven game series, I think the Pelicans. It's an admirable performance by them, but I think they're just going to run out of gas. You know, Damian Lillard's always great, but I think. I think really C.J. McCollum has also, I, I, I think everyone, C.J. McCollum's always been pretty solid, right? But I think in games that were, where Dame wasn't playing, I feel like C.J. McCollum really just filled those shoes really well, just stepped right in and was 
was a more than more than reliable shooter. That's good. Oh, Nurkic as well. Yusuf Nurkic is kind of like that big man that balances out that team too. So they're not they're not too I guess top heavy, bottom heavy, however you want to call it, too guard heavy. So that could that could bring a unique look to They've got a little more balance in than one may think. I like the Blazers in this. All right. There's Fox in the box, De'Aaron Fox, George Gervin, the Iceman, Frank Tilakina, Rated Rookie, Cyan. It's light blue, sky blue, whatever they call it. So many names. This goes to the Knicks, Ricky, 31 out of 49. Ben Simmons, Hollow. Even though that's not his rookie card, I think his second year stuff, especially the hollow, still probably does pretty well on a secondary market. Mark with the Sixers. There's De'Aaron Fox, Kings, Ricky with the Kings. Lime Green out of 175. Nice season for De'Aaron Fox. There's Derrick Rose, orange. Cavs addition to 199 for Kurt. Markel Fultz, another the rookies card for Mark and the Sixers. Wayne Selden, rated rookie, hollow for the Grizz. And wow. This is going to be a cool one. You won't believe what happened next. Joel Embiid, green. Three out of five. Wow. Mark, wake up. Oh, Mark's on the West Coast. He's up. Boombox. Run to your laptop. Three out of five. Joel Embiid. Time to wake up the neighborhood with a train whistle. This almost looks like Christmas colors right here. It's Christmas for Mark. Three out of five, all aboard. The Big Hit Express. Woo woo! What a season for Joel Embiid. If comes back soon, comes back healthy. Can make the Sixers pretty dangerous in the playoffs. Playoffs? There's Red Tyler Ulis. Suns might end up with a nice draft pick this year. Put it all together. Brandon Ingram, nice second year for him. Isaiah Thomas, it's hip surgery, I think, but might help the Lakers get him on the cheap. All right. Next box, last game. Warriors, Spurs. Warriors are the second seed. Spurs are the seventh seed. Spurs definitely look a little slower, a little older. I don't know what kind of weird drama has been happening with Kawhi Leonard all season. I don't think he's going to be playing in the playoffs. Ah, there he is. I, I knew you must have stepped away, Boombox. So I, I, I had to yell. Um, congrats. That's a nice Joel Embiid. Um, Warrior Spurs. Yeah, yeah. They got to start looking old all of a sudden, right? Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, Paul Gasol. You know, it can't just be LaMarcus Aldridge. No Kawhi. I mean, Pop is great. And he might he, he might coach a circle or two around around banged up warriors, but I think across a seven game series. What's not good for the Warriors though is that I think this might stretch out a little bit. This series might stretch out a little bit. And if that happens and they run into like, you know, the Blazers who only played maybe five or six games at, at relatively you know, and relatively easily beating the Pelicans, maybe. 
if they do that, they might be ready and energized for that for a series against the Warriors. But but, that, but by then the Warriors may may be full strength. I think Clay Thompson's or not not Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson's back. I think. Warriors fans, talk to me here. We're on the West Coast, so I know there's got to be some folks up north with Warriors knowledge. Clay Thompson back, I think. Steph Curry not back for the first round, I think. Draymond banged up a little bit. And I think Kevin Durant is fine. I think what they lack is maybe some bench. So they may be a little thin, so that might... That might get to them at some point or another. Rated rookie. Oh, there was there was one that actually had the pronunciation of his name. Fifteen, I think that's his base card. Fifteen out of ninety-nine. Zoe Key, I think is how you say it, or Joe Key. For the Rockets, that goes to Michael Tran. Champ is here. Remember Paige Stoyakovic? 60 out of 99. You guys, Eric? EA, you got her. I think he, wasn't he a king for a minute or two? Will Chamberlain, Patrick Beverly. We've got Pink Velocity, Robert Covington for the Sixers, 31 out of 79. And look at this, Larry Hughes, Signature Series, last spot mojo for Tyrone. Nice, there's John Collins, Rated Rookie, Hollow for the Hawks. I'll go to Kurt. And Markel Fultz for the Sixers, Rated Rookie, Blue. Forty nine out of forty nine for Boombox. JR Smith. Dwayne Wade. Joel Embiid. Silver. You might all you need to do is find the one of one mark and you would you would be able to uh We'll sleeve up this Joel and B. I might be able to make a rainbow too. Avery Bradley. And out of 39, Robert Covington. Black Velocity. Another one for Boombox. A lot of Sixers in here. Avery Bradley for the Pistons. Jake. Out of 199. Zoe. No, 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 no one has thoughts on the Warriors, huh? Two boxes to go. I think if overall, if I, if I'm if I'm putting pennies on on any of these games, I feel like there would be value in there would be some value in maybe the Pacers, right? I feel like the Pacers would be would be undervalued by Vegas. And so if you bet against the Cavs, right, you take the points with the Pacers, especially if you think a lot of the public will take the Cavs, there may, may be some good value in the Pacers if you were going underdog. I would put pennies on the Jazz too, Seth. I think that, that'll be a good a good value play right there as well. I think I think the Wolves will get so many points. That could be interesting too. Timberwolves will get a lot of points. I think Rockets may may, may at some point well maybe not in the playoffs, but I wonder if they, if they're if they're at home. I should look at early early lines, but if they get if they get double digits, if like the Wolves get like ten points, right, right? Plus nine and a half on the on the spread, that could be interesting. That could be an interesting play. Uh, what are, what other 
teams look. Bucks would have value, I think. I, I think, the, I think the Bucks against Celtics. I would take the points with the Bucks just because Celtics are beat up a little bit, but they may be a little overvalued by Vegas. Is my impression. I'd have to look, but I don't think the Sixers will have too much value until later. I would kind of. I think I'd pass on that Warrior Spurs matchup. It's not super exciting to me. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if there's too much value in the Pelicans, but Pacers could be interesting. Wolves, Jazz. Is LeBron going to my Lakers next season? I doubt it. I doubt it. I, you know, LeBron's not getting any younger. He's played a zillion minutes this season. Um, I don't think he wants to go to a team like my Lakers that are still still a few years away from from even contending against the Warriors or the Rockets or or maybe they'll be they'll be good enough just as the Rockets and the Warriors are cycling down, you know what I mean? <laughs> By then LeBron would be cycling down as well. Those Alfred, Alfred Payton, Trevor Booker. So that's kind of tough to see if he would uh if he actually wants to be part of that process. I think it'd be easier if Paul George opts out. I think there's a better chance of seeing Paul George here. But I guess if Paul George, there's Alfred Payton, I don't want to. I guess if Paul George ends up here, maybe that would lure LeBron here. Could be interesting. Reggie Miller? Wow. Reggie Miller Signature Series. For Michael K and the Pacers. This has actually been a really great case if you think about it. I know there's a lot of base cards in between, but... Reggie Miller, much to Joe Cavanaugh's chagrin, is that uh, is one of my favorite non-Laker players. I, th I think Allen Iverson and, and Reggie Miller, two of my favorite players in, in basketball outside of... All the Lakers, but yeah, I don't think I don't think LeBron's gonna want to come here. Maybe if Paul George is here, perhaps. Maybe if you know they work out a deal where the Lakers could still re-sign restricted free, free agent Julius Randle, I think that'd be great. But I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think LeBron's gonna take a pay cut or anything like that. But if Paul George opts out, and that's an if, if Paul George opts out, I think there could be a good chance that he would end up in L.A. And I think he's, a little, he's you know, younger, young enough to, to be willing to fit in with this team and grow with this team. Uh, what, how do I feel about Andre Ingram? I think it's a fantastic story. I didn't even, you know, I've heard, like, little bits about the story. You know, um, he's on the G League team. Uh... South Bay Lakers. They play right around here somewhere near our store. I've actually never been to one of those games. I should. But it's a great story though, right? I mean, he's been in the G League for, he's like in his early 30s, been in the G League for, for, for 10 years. Got, he even has a little gray in his hair already. When you think about a call-up, you're not thinking about, you know, at least in professional athlete terms, older guys. And there's a great sound bite. I don't. I think there's video to this, which I have not seen yet. Actually, is that um, they called him into the to the office, right, with like Rob Palenka and with Magic Johnson, and he thought it was going to be for an exit interview. So they, I, I'm sure. I think most teams do this. They 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 have exit interviews with the owner owners usually ownership and the GMs and front office staff and coaches and stuff and. You know, they'll talk about the season, what what they want to see next season, what they want to improve on, blah, blah, blah. We have extra interviews here. And kind of a big media day for, for, for the Lakers, right? So he thought he was just doing an extra interview. And he came in and he was just like, and they were like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I think he had a great season with the G League. He thought it was just a basic extra interview. And then they hit him with, the Lakers want to sign you for the last two games of the season. And so he'll get like an NBA paycheck for those two games, which for guys in the G League who are making, uh, what, $50,000 a year or something like that, which relatively speaking is, is 
is really nothing. But you could tell how happy he was. You know, that's a, it's such a great story. You could tell how happy he was. He, he, I, I heard a, a sound by where he's like, oh, that's why all the big that's why all the big dogs are here, or the big guys are here, like Magic and Rob Palenka. He's like, why would they show up for me? You know, like at a random exit interview. And so he was he was incredibly happy. I think he called his wife or his girlfriend or something like that, and she was like, she's screaming on the phone. And it's a it's a great story. I don't know what what kind of future he has with the Lakers. You know, I mean, he's played ten years in the G League. Maybe he gets a he's like the fifteenth man on a roster next year. But he had a great game. Put together some great games. He looked good. How much are the Lakers going to be in NT next week? Yeah, probably probably that. <laughs> Alec Burks. I don't know. I'm scared to see what the pricing is going to be. Uh, the pricing obviously will also depend on what NT costs this year. EA with the Jazz. Alec Burks out of 99. And rated rookie auto. Wesley Iwundu. That goes to the Magic. That'll be Ricky. That's our last autograph of the day, or of this break. It's Kobe. Draymond Green in Lime Green. I love it. Golden State Warriors, Michael. Got to top load this right away. Draymond Green in Lime Green? 100 out of 175. Let's see what other parallels we have. This last box. We did it, folks. Just over an hour, that's okay. Patrick Beverly, orange, it's good timing. No randomizers or anything like that, so we're good here. Caleb Swanigan, hollow. Carl Anthony Towns, we'll see him in the playoffs. Josh Jackson, the rookies. Seth Curry. There's Bob McAdoo. Champions here, Tim Duncan. Lime to 175 for the Spurs. And Chris Dunn will close things out. Nick Sanderson, you are well on the way to a rainbow. We got you the one of one. We got you the lime green. We got you the, the base version of this. Just a handful more to go. Red, green, orange, hollow. All right, there you have it, folks. What a great break. Thanks for keeping me company in this long break. Appreciate it. We've got more Optic Basketball in the store right here on jazbeeshobbyland.com. So check it out, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.